the covenant that has never been changed, the covenant that has been proved to be steadfast uh, with all the figures in the Bible. And by him and through him, this covenant has been passed down to since the very first man of this earth. And the covenant, that is what God desired the most, even right now. What is a covenant? The very covenant that's never been changed and the very covenant that God still carries from the past, even present of today, and until tomorrow and the end of the age, God wants to bring this gospel to the ends of the earth. He wants you to go and make disciples of all nations. What's his covenant? It then bring your notes, take your notes out, and write. I'll wait till you bring your notes out. Mark sixteen, fifteen, twenty. The covenant going to the world and proclaim the gospel. This is covenant that God had since you're saved. Even before you're saved, he had this covenant for you. This covenant that stands forever is that the covenant telling you to be the witness to the ends of the earth. Do you Hold on to the covenant. Instead of you try to practice the covenant, my question is, do we believe in, in this covenant? Do we believe he's making us go and make disciples of all nations? Do we believe he's making us go into all the world to proclaim the gospel? Do we believe it's him who's raising us as a witness to the end of the earth? It's not the matter of how well you apply the word. It's a matter of do you believe in the word or not? Because the word will energize you. The word will let you move. So without the word, you will only leave your religious work. So do you have the word? Is this your covenant? John chapter 20, 15 to 20 Feed my lamp, serve my sheep, and again, feed my lamp. Is this the covenant that I have? For this reason, he has decided to be your background. Do you believe in this? He has a reason to be your father, your one instructor. He has one reason why he wants to be the background of you. And he decided to be your background. According to Romans chapter 8, 29 and 30, he says, He foreknew you. He predestined you. He called you. He justified you. And he glorified you. For what? For this reason, he has called you. And he's now the background of you, and that's a blessing of throne. For this reason, he decided to be with you always. Even when you're going down the road, even when you're in the depth of your life, even when you're very excited, never missing a moment of your life, he decided to be with you always. Wherever disciples go preach the gospel, the Lord in the throne was with them at the work. He decided to be with you and work in you 
always and forever. This is a blessing of throne He has given to us. This blessing goes beyond my time. It goes beyond my place, my space. Easily saying, it's overcoming my limitation. Psalm chapter 103, verse 20 to 22, it says, Praise the Lord, you angels, you mighty ones, who carry out his plan, listening for each of his commands. Yes, praise the Lord, you armies of angels, who serve him and do his will. Praise the Lord, everything he has created, everything in all his kingdom, let all that I am praise the Lord. The angels that listen to him, obey him, and do his will, who's everywhere that God reigns is with you, and his, they are mobilized for you, and that goes beyond my time and my space. Do we, in this flow, in this flow of his covenant, undoubtedly, God will grant you the blessing of 237 nations. We many, many times we worry, how much should I make in order to go into 237 nations? So we always try, when we receive the word, this is a tendency that we try to put the word into action right away. That's what we've learned from the world. When someone tells you to do something, you got to do something. And you try to plan ahead. Although it's a word given to you, now that it's me needs to plan and make my own way and find method to fulfill God's covenant. This is when we fail again. This is when we fall into religion again. When the word is given, let the word proceed its covenant itself through our life. So 237 nation is not something we should worry about my money or my education. How much should I establish to get into 237 nation? No. When you're in the covenant with the blessing, do you believe he will open the door, the door of 237 nations to you? He will open the door, 5,000 people group, to you. Do you believe in this? I've been going to uh, I I've I've been going to Irvine for Tarapang. And after Irvine I go to Orange. I might I might be able to just simply go to do the Tarapang just for this remnant or this family. But now that our prayer topic is different. I'm not just going into Irvine. I'm going into 237 nation. Do you believe in this? I'm not going just having a tarapang with this one family. I'm having a tarapang with 5,000 people. And four months ago, I started to meet this woman uh, from Thai. And she lives in Fullerton. And since my Dharapang that I believe is a door to 237 nation and 5,000 people, and now that I'm, I start to meet Thai, I was thinking, why is God opening the door for me to a different nationality, a different door that I've never been to? Is God opening the door to this, this uh, ethnic group? And after the Dharapang of this, there was a remnant uh, who brought me her girlfriend, and the girlfriend turns out to be Thai. So I feel like maybe there's a reason why God's opened the door for me to this Thai. And I went to honeymoon to Phuket, which is at Thailand. So now my life is now very relatable to Thai, right? And the 
most famous food that I have, uh, not famous food, the favorite food that I love is Thai food. So I can see there's a correlation in between me and my life and Thai. Um, it was Wednesday, I got a phone call. She lives in Tustin. And she's from Thai. Another one from Thai. So don't you believe there is reason? Everything that you do, God will open the door. And I realized this Fullerton Thai works at Orange. Isn't there a reason for everything, right? Don't you believe what you do relates to 237 nation and 5,000 people group? Do I need to seek Thai people everywhere or is God going to bring them to me? If we are in this covenant with the blessing of throne that be, that goes beyond my limitation. God will open 237 nation and 5,000 people group to you. Before it becomes your desire, that is God's one desire. So God should fulfill his desire. Do we believe in the covenant? In this flow of his work, he's speaking to you today. And within his word, he gives you identity and authority to pray. The word that is speaking to you, it's not, re not relatable. It is relatable regarding 237 nation and 5,000 people group. It's about word evangelization, and in that I find who I am. In this flow of the word, in this flow of the covenant, you will see this. Me, 237 nation, and the blessing of throne is related very closely. What I do is 237 nation. What I do is a door to 5,000 people group. Where I am is a door to 237 nation. Where I go is a blessing of throne follows me. Where Joseph was, was a door to Egypt. He was slavery, he was in jail, there was a door to Pharaoh. There was a blessing of throne already prepared for Joseph. You will see what I do what I eat, what I leave, whatever that I do is 237 nation and throne. Do you guys believe in this? So hold on to the covenant. For this reason, God changed me. For the sake of word evangelization, God changed you. Once you're changed, you're forever changed. God changed, changed Abraham into Abraham. Once his name changed, he's changed forever. Sarai into Sarah. Once her name changed, her name changed forever. You're once circumcised, you're forever circumcised. Once God changed you, you're changed forever. Your destiny is changed, your fate is changed, your destruction is already destroyed, you're changed, changed by the grace of God. Once I am changed, I am changed forever. And He's making us and driving us into the covenant. Me, who used to be slaves of Satan, 
is crucified. Me, who's following after Satan, is crucified. Me, living for the world, is crucified. Me, living in the scar, is crucified. Me, living in the culture, is crucified. Me, that I was born with sin, is crucified. All my past and scar, and all my problems in the past, and all my present, everything is crucified. Me, who used to live for myself, for my material thing, me, who's only thinking of my own future, is now crucified. Me, who's worried all the time. Me, who's depressed all the time. Me, who's anxious all the time. Me, who's very powerlessness all the time. Me, who's incompetence all the time is crucified. The one you believe who you were up until this point is crucified. Do you guys believe in this? All the part of me in the past on the cross with Christ is crucified. Me under the destiny, me under the fate, me under such problems and difficulties I am crucified. There is no me anymore. Because all me are crucified. We lost our ability to live on our own. Because I am crucified. I know lion wants to play game all the time. That lion wants to play game all the time is crucified. So now that lion is crazy for evangelism. Amen. David Om. Um, Obsessed with evangelism. Did you guys know this? Because the one before is crucified. Ethan, look at his face. That's a face for spiritual battle. That's a face for world evangelization. He's been crucified. Justin were short. Even in this cold weather, that means he's ready to go any cold weather land. To share the gospel. He's showing them his muscle right now. His old past is crucified. We are new creation. Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. What does it say? I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. My beginning is changed to Christ, and my end is concluded in Christ. My beginning is now Jesus. My end is now Jesus. I am totally changed. Can we confess that? I am changed. You are. And within this new identity, we're living with the new spiritual DNA. I am changed. Everything is changed. And when we look at 2 Corinthians 5.17, it says, I am now, therefore anyone is in Christ. He's a new creation. The old has gone. The new has come. We are the new creation. If you're really, 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 really honest, if anyone asks, Justin, who are you? How are you supposed to answer to that? He's supposed to answer, I am the main figure to bring this gospel to the nations. Do you guys believe in this? If you're really, 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 really truthful and honest, if anyone asks Unji, who are you? What is the answer for that? 
She's an evangelist. We'll bring the gospel to Pharaoh. Do we believe in that? Don't we judge ourselves by looking at what I am doing today? Don't we, ju don't we judge others by looking at what they're doing today? But why don't we judge ourselves through the word of God and being honest with the word and what's the word say about us? You're the remnant will bring the gospel to the age. That's who we are. We are changed. First, second king... The one with the new spiritual DNA. Now Elijah is about to be gone. Elisha followed him after and after and after. And till the end, he would not see Elijah anymore. Elijah offered Elisha, why not you stand at Gilgal? Why not you stand at Bethel? Why not, why not you stop following me at Jericho? Why not, can't you just stop there at Jordan? And Elijah is offering Elisha, here's your position, here's fame, here's money I can provide you, here's everything that I want to give it to you. But the one with different spiritual DNA asks something that no one asks. I want the double portion of the Spirit who was working in you. That was what Elisha desired. Elijah, don't you see me following you till the end? Not because I want position, not because I want money, not because I want success, but because I want the double portion of the spirit that was once working you. That's what I desire. After Jesus spoke 40 days of pertaining uh, about his kingdom. Now people are asking, okay, Lord, I've, we've listened to you for 40 days. And after the 40 days of listening to Jesus who, who was resurrected, now they see Jesus who, were, who was dead and now he was resurrected. He's there looking at the living Jesus and hearing him 40 days of his kingdom and they're asking him, okay, Lord, now that we've been attentive to you, but why not can't you be attentive to me? When are you going to restore my kingdom? That was their question. God's word came upon them and God gave them the power to overpower their need, and their will. You will be the witness to the ends of the earth. And when they were gathering at Mark's upper room, there was working of the Holy Spirit. You know, many times we cannot overcome what I really want, what I really desire. Once we want something, we're obsessed with it, we really want to buy it. Every day we search for it. We cannot overcome myself unless there is a filling of the Holy Spirit. And when we're filling of the Holy Spirit, we will surely overcome and we will be the witness to the end of the earth. This new spiritual DNA within that we desire the filling of the Holy Spirit. Philippians chapter 3, 12 to 14. What did, what did Paul confess in jail? That might be the end of his ministry, but this is what, I, what he said. Not that I have already obtained this or am already perfect, but I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Brothers, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead. I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Whatever I've obtained, now I lose them. And I consider myself not having anything my own yet, and I press forward for what's been prepared ahead of me. <clears throat> Lord, fill me with the Holy Spirit. All the answers that we've been receiving, we're not stopped there. Within that answers, he's directing us towards word evangelization. You know what? God, why? Why does God change us? Why does he want us to be changed? 
when we cannot, He literally changed our life. Why? This is what God desires. The gospel movement without a motivation. The gospel movement without a calculation. A gospel movement without manipulation. God desire to raise a gospel movement in the United States through you guys' remnants. Uh, there was a, there was a, not a testimony, but the, it was a worries of someone, um, someone asking for advice because she has a husband who's a pastor, and she was 60, 26 weeks pregnant, and the pre pastor, the husband, started to beat her up. And she was asking for the advice. Yesterday, one of our church members, I met her, and she told me about her friend. Her friend had the parents who, were, who was divorced when she was young. And mom got, to, got, uh, got remarried to this guy who's a pastor. And this pastor started to sexually harass her stepdaughter, his stepdaughter. And she ran away from house when she became 20. And her mom found out that she was sexually harassed. And you know what mom said? It's good for you to just live outside by yourself. So mom decided to stay with her husband when she let her daughter leave their family. Since then, Daughter was so mad, and she, she can't deal with any Christians anymore. She, she believed her body is already dirty. Guess what she became? She's a prostitute right now. She's being prostitute. My question is this. What are you going to share? If you ever meet that kind of field, in that moment, maybe once in her life, she opened her heart, listened to you. Once in her life, she opened her heart to share her story to you. What are you going to share to that person that you will never get that chance anymore? If you were not the gospel, and if you're there with your motivation and calculation, can we save her? In your life, if you, if you ever met that kind of pastor who's very violent, who's harassing his daughter sexually, and finally he came to you, listened to you, what are you going to share? Would you share another legalism? Would you share another contents? Or what are you going to share? In the very moment, which they will never have that chance anymore. Uh, can you show us a picture, medium, that I asked to show us? This is uh, by Ruby Kendrick. She's a missionary to Korea, uh, very old age of 20s. And she came to Korea for a mission, and she only stayed for nine months, and she died. And this is where her grave is, and this is what is written on her grave. If I had a thousand lives to give, Korea should have them all. That was her fate. No motivation, no calculation. What did Asher confess to bring this gospel to the nation, to deliver the nation? She says, if I perish, I will perish. What did Daniel's three friends confess? But even if he does not deliver us, I can compromise. But if not, be known to your king that we will not serve your gods. It's a life-staking gospel movement. God is changing you. 
because this will never help you to raise a pure gospel movement. Sometimes people ask me regarding the mission on Pastor, <clears throat> do you lose money doing mission? And I'm like, yeah, of course. Because I've never done mission to make profit out of it. So it is true that I'm losing money. But the thing is this, my question is this. When you spend thousand thousand dollars to buy a car, do you say I lost money to buy a car? You don't say that, right? When you're paying ten billion, ten million dollar, twenty million dollar, hundred million dollar to buy a house, are you saying, "Oh, I'm losing hundred million dollar to buy a house"? Am I suffer a loss? Or am I making a loss? No. My value is not on my house, not on my car, it's on my remnants. So I never make loss raising remnants. Isn't that true? But many are thinking, Pastor, aren't you losing much to do the remnant movement? Well, you didn't say that when you buy a house. You didn't say that when you buy your car. You didn't say that when you buy your clothes. When you're buying your clothes, you're not saying I'm losing money buying my clothes. You may invest your money on anything, but my resolute of my life, I invest my money on remnants. And they are my future, and they are my life. So, am I losing money, or am I making my profit then? I'm making my future. For church, it's not something where I would calculate to give my money or not. I don't care how church you'd use my money or not. I don't care. What I believe, God's going to use my money for His kingdom. So what I do, just give all for this gospel movement. Do you guys remember last year, we were keep saying, prepare the next 30 years for the gospel movement? But have you ever noticed it's not any more 30 years? It's 29 years now. What have you done last year? God is preparing us 30 years of gospel movement. We have 29 years left. More closer to my future, we have 9 years. Andre is really healthy. Andre is really strong, but after nine years, he's going to be old. He's going to be like 37, 38. Angelica looks so young. Well, she's going to be the end of 30s after 10 years. Then she'll be very tired all the time. Like nine years later, David Arms already end of 20, 27 or 28. And he can't stay like that. Right, right now, he can do anything. 27, I'm, I don't know. He'll be rotted. His body health will be rotted. 10 years later, how old our pastor is going to be? Pastor Zhang is going to be 80. Pastor Masuda is going to be 80. Pastor Yeo is going to be middle of 60. Pastor Lee is going to be 60. I'm the youngest. Pastor Park is going to be 50. I'm the youngest. I'll be in the middle of 40s. Everyone's getting old. Everyone's getting rotted. We need the young remnants rise up for the remnant movement, for this startup movement. How do I hold on to my problem? Let's look at this. When we see the problems of the age, Don't you feel this sometimes? That problem of the age is really relatable to my problem. Isn't the problem of age my problem? Then why do you think God has given you that problem? We find our covenant in this. So when you see the problems, this is what you do. 
instead of trying to solve it right away, wait until the word comes upon your life. Once the word comes upon you, your heart, you will know that's your word. You know why unbeliever says there's no God? It's because they don't know. And at the same time, because God is not in them, that's why they don't know. How do we know God is alive? How do we know God is living? Because we know He's living in us. If you possess, you know what you have. When the word comes on you, you will know this is my word. When the word comes on you, that's when you challenge. Let's say you're waiting for the word, the word never comes to you and you died. That's murder. You're waiting for the word and you go before God and God says, why did you come? And you say, oh, because you didn't give me the word when I was on earth. So now I'm in heaven to receive your word. So wait until word comes upon your thought and your mind. It will rain upon you with the comforts and with the assurance. You will know that's my word. My word is confirmed. It's Jesus, you're the Christ, the son of the living God. And my word is also this. Everything is in evangelism. That's my word. What is your word? Wait, and once the word comes upon you, that's when you challenge. When the word is yours, it's not the matter of what others say about you. They might say that's wrong. That's wrong direction, wrong decision. But when you know the word is my word, you'll not be swayed. Wait for the word. And word comes on you. Don't even listen to anyone. Just follow the word. That's how we receive the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Do you have the word? Third, for the next 29 years, for the next 9 years, you will experience everything is prepared. Literally everything is prepared. There's nothing you need to invent. There's nothing you need to create. You're not the pioneer of your life, nor the pioneer of your faith. Jesus is your beginning. He's your end. And he's the one proceeding the walk of faith in your life. You will see everything is prepared. Nowadays, you guys are worried about money. How much am I going to make? You don't have the covenant. You'll make money as much as you made when you were three. Don't expect you're going to make more when you're getting old. You believe you're getting old, you're going to make money a lot. I'm sorry. You're not going to make any. Let's not focus on my situation or my problem. Let's shift our focus from mine to God. That's how God is changing me today. Why? He wants to raise a pure gospel movement. One lastly, I believe you guys are really precious. Last Friday I was praying Thinking about Irene, <clears throat> I couldn't stop crying. Thinking about Angel, Angelica, I couldn't stop crying. Thinking of Evangeline, Lion, I couldn't stop crying. Thinking of Midim, Han, Justin, whoever here, Ethan, Joseph, I couldn't stop crying. Well, when I see Unji, I left. I left because she was using phone. <laughs> Everyone else, I couldn't stop crying. I pray to God, Lord, you got to use Andre. You can't let them just stay in their past or their scar. Lord, you cannot just let them be like that forever. Bring them out of their past. Use them as your instruments. And that was my sore contents of my prayer last Friday. Raise these remnants who can speak Korean and English. These remnants, while Pastor Yu, Pastor Zhang's alive, they can listen to them directly. They're the one after 10 years, after 20 years, will leave the same message to the next generation. So let them not stay in their past. Let them not stay in their scars. Let them not be troubled by the problem they're going through. 
Lord, fill them with the Holy Spirit to overcome their limitation. Their future is already prepared. Ten million disciples are waiting for them. Let them overcome anything that they're going through today. Fill them with the Holy Spirit. Let them not stop at their position. Let them not stay swayed by the answers they receive. Let them press forward for the word evangelization. I know there will be many who once energized to go, but stop when they receive answers. But let them not resonate their life with answers. Let them not compromise with their excuse. Let them go forward, make 10 million disciples. Lord, we need this gospel movement in this church in the United States. That's what I prayed last Friday. And that's the, you guys are the contents of my prayer nowadays. Lord, let them not stay in their own nature. Let everything become their platform. Let everything that they went through become a door for world evangelization. That's my prayer. And throughout this week, I want you to have the desire of God as your covenant and let it be your prayer topic. Let's experience what God does in my life through the word. And let's have time of praise. And can you turn up the light? And we'll see he knows my name. Lion, don't forget we're playing this in E chords. everything of us he foreknew predestined he called and justified and glorified us let's accept what he's doing in our lives I have a maker I have a maker he formed my heart before even time began my life was in his hand I have a maker I have a maker he formed my heart before even time began my life was in his hands he knows he knows my name he knows he knows my every thought he sees he sees each tear Falls and hears me when I call. He knows my name, He knows my name, He knows, he knows my every thought. He sees each tear that falls. He hears me when I call. I have a father. I have a father. He calls me his own. He'll never leave me. He'll never leave me. No matter where I go, He knows my.
my name He knows my every thought He sees His tear that falls And hears me when I call He knows He knows my name He knows my every thought He sees each tear that falls And hears me when I call
the Spirit of God lives in me. The Spirit moves within me. Father, it is our tendency that we try to do things for you. But unless it's by the Spirit, do we even have power to anything? Lord, you, are, you saved us from darkness. You changed us. You changed our name. You changed our destiny. You changed our faith. You changed our future into your kingdom. Lord, we're not asking for our profit. We would rather give everything to earn your kingdom, to establish your remnants, to raise 10 million disciples. Lord, we believe there's no, man, no calculation or motivation or manipulation we need to make. Father, we solely believe in, in your covenant. Raise our remnants to make 10 million disciples. Raise our remnants to leave pure gospel to the next generation. Raise our remnants to carry this church. And we give all glory and we give all our hearts and we pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.